This is the part where I make faces until I see the chat come up. <laughs> hey, it's Bill, and you're tuned into the Pennsylvania Rock Show, featuring the best unsigned rock and metal that Pennsylvania has to offer. Right here on parockshow.com, megarockradio.net, altrockradio.ca, xrpradio.co.uk. That one's in Birmingham. You know where Ozzy's from. <laughs> mm. um, Radio.com on the beaches of San Diego, California. Uh, 107.1 nice. FM, St. Louis, Missouri, along with Megarockradio.net from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, Alt Rock Radio in Hamilton, Canada, Ontario, Canada, since I forgot to mention that one. Um, I think I hit them all except for my own, buildthescene.com. Right here in the thriving metropolis of Leechburg, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, this is episode number 559. With me tonight is the vocalist from the metal band Instakill out of the Pittsburgh area. What's up, Mike? I think I just lost him. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there he is. I'm uh, happy to be here, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. We're here. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, so, man. I think we may have a little bit of delay happening. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, I right. got you. We're good. All right, so first and foremost, you're wearing a Transformers hat, and you have penguin stuff behind you. I have a feeling like, <laughs> you know, and, and we talked a little bit off the air. You know, we're definitely from the same same age bracket and, and uh, right. realm of, of likes, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Transformers are the jam. They're still those movies are uh, pretty outrageous. Oh, they are. I watched a few more with my son, and I was sitting there going, "Man, I used to watch cartoons. <laughs> it's so much right, better right. now." <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But the the voice of Optimus Prime, man, that still like makes your your uh, hair on your arms stand up. Yeah, I love it. Hopefully, hopefully he's around for a long time. <laughs> Uh, they got to figure out a way to make a clone of him or something. <laughs> we need we need that epic voice forever. So let's let's get the cliche questions out of the way first, and then I'll hit you with some of the normal Pennsylvania rock show style stuff. <laughs> um, so where did, where did the band name come from? Uh well, we're all gamers. Uh, we all like our uh, our video games and. Um, it was kind of like a common thread between us. And we were actually, when we started looking up the name, we were surprised that it wasn't already taken. So we were like, okay, yeah. Because we kind of have a, uh, you know, uh, a style that has a sort of brutality to it. Um, it's not all that way. I like to sing and, you know, shriek and flail and, and all that fun stuff too. But uh, I, th I feel like my personal style is always kind of a mix-up of, of all that. So Ralph McCartney is hanging out with us right now, and he just typed Mike in you know extended screaming type <laughs> thing with exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice, man. Yeah, Ralph is a good dude too, man. Lots of I've been fortunate to know lots of good people in the scene. Uh, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to be is is involved in the scene over the years because like we were talking about earlier family and obligations and uh just you know i've been in and out of a lot of projects over the years and uh made a lot of good friends so more more met more good people than bad is, is the way i can say it for sure. it's ralph ralph is currently holding my spot in homicide black and keeping it warm for me ah nice that, that's a running joke <laughs> <laughs> I, I one time I even took a picture like I was in the photo with Homicide Black and I edited it Ralph out and slid myself over. <laughs> nice. I don't know how to play the bass. He's safe. <laughs> um also in the chat is Woof's Customs, which is a um guitar and musical yeah. instrument um customizer. They do um do finishes on guitars and 
um, drums, and they have this this finish they call the hollow flash, which is very. I don't want to use the word pretty, but it kind of is pretty. It's flashy. It's multiple colors. They they okay. do the hollow flash, and then um, that's Chris's realm, and then his wife Raven does um, hand painted versions of of um, artwork on on okay. the instruments. And uh, you can find them nice. at woofscustoms.info. They happen to be a sponsor of the buildthescene.com um, radio station. So we'll throw that plug in oh, there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Anybody willing to help out, it's always somebody we uh, want to support, you know? Um, let's see. Another cliche question. Um, I don't have very many of those. <laughs> <laughs> We can get crazy right off the bat, man. I mean, oh, okay. You ready for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's do it, bro. All right. So off the air, you told me you guys have about ten originals right now. Right. All right. So let's say that there's a catastrophic event, and it wipes out the majority of the people on Earth, mm. and only one song from every band survives. Which Insta Kill song is going to help repopulate the Earth? Which Insta Kill? repopulate the earth now now we could take that one of two ways we could take it like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay we're, like we're setting the mood for some sexy time or <laughs> or we're talking about we need to go like murder another clan to be like the king. <laughs> yeah i guess so, e- either way uh it's, we're, we're, it's tough to come by with the sexy time songs with me man uh, <laughs> most <laughs> most of my um lyrical content in the earlier days was very angry and uh i've I've mailed out mellowed out a lot these days so um i i try to do a sometimes i guess it all depends on each song but i I try to have a more positive outlook these days um if i am going to pick one the one that comes to mind is being um and we've all kind of, when we originally wrote that song, we all kind of felt like, wow, this is this is a song that really kind of stuck out amongst the first batch of songs as the one that kind of, you know, was the single out of that, if that, you know what I mean? Like the, the one that just seemed like it would have the most appeal to a greater audience. Um, and part of that might be the lyrics, but it's just uh, one of those songs that when you write it, you're just like, all right, hell yeah, you know, just everything clicks, and uh, that's how that one is. So I would say being. Hey, so you you and I are similar age bracket, so you will actually get this mm-hmm. question. Sometimes when I do this, they, they don't, and we're going to use use the song Being since it's one you brought up. Okay. Here's right. your uh, MTV Storytellers moment. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> that song. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so... The lyrics for that song, um, I just I just run them down. So the the verse is uh, force fed piles of shit, and I'm not good with it because it's making me sick. Um, and it, it just kind of, you know, it's a little bit self explanatory. It's uh, that was one that kind of came about when the whole I was battling with with this whole covid thing and everybody kind of being locked down and uh just like having to take this you know it wasn't uh it wasn't something that anybody wanted to do and it was a really uh you know he had a quite a polarized two-sided you know you have extremists on yeah this isn't even real and then everyone there weren't many people in the middle (laughs) exactly right um, so, and, and, and I've just always had a kind of a defiance to my persona, you know, ever since I was, uh, back in the nineties when my angsty metals career started. <laughs> so I, I feel like that might be, um, and then the chorus is, um, it's asking what is being like, what are we doing? What is really what are we doing with this existence? Is there something to it or are we just being, um, so I feel like in a post apocalyptic, either 
you know, you're, you're, you got to figure out what it is. I, I feel like, you know, we're all here for something. I don't know what, but just trying to make the best that we can. Everybody's doing their own thing. And uh, one thing I try to remember too, is that just because something doesn't make sense to me from another person's perspective, it makes total sense. And uh, it's, it's hard to not judge people and how they think, but until you're in their shoes, you really don't know. You really can't truly have an understanding of their perspective. So I, I always try to keep that in mind and I don't know, spread that around. Not to hate people too much and be, uh, you know, compassionate to a degree. That went way deeper than I expected it to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said we needed to kill some time, so I'm good at BSing. So I figured I'd just roll it out. Um, let's say that Instakill gets to go on a world tour. Oh boy. Okay, so this scenario, I have a couple questions for. All right. The first one is, what other bands would you want on the tour with you? They could be other local mm -hmm. bands or bands that are already out there getting it done wow hmm um i feel like um we would fit in with uh a band like uh periphery i feel like they're um they have the same kind of sporadic style um, they're more sporadic. We're, we're more structured than they are. Um, but uh, I, I would, you know, I really like their music a lot. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, maybe like a Lamb of God, because we have the same kind of uh, aggressive vocal. I, I sing a lot more than, than Randy does, or well, at least from what I know. I haven't been the, the biggest... Uh, follower of what they've done in the recent couple albums but he was usually until that one song I never even heard him sing before so um, I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan of corn they're the ones that kind of got me into um, the heavier side of music before that uh, it was Alice in Chains uh, I would you know they would be one of my favorites to to get to play with if that was a possibility faith no more um i know i don't know what some of the other guys would say that would be an interesting question to uh bounce off some of them because they'd be like corn really or, you know so i don't know <laughs> but uh I, I would think you know those more heavy but melodic as well bands we would we'd melt nicely with them on the tour i think okay so sticking sticking with that theme for for a little while so you're out on the tour, and uh, mm -hmm. for some reason I'm hanging out with you guys on the tour. What what right. what will the soundtrack be in between shows? So what are we going to listen to when we're traveling we from from to? from venue to venue? Ah, that's a good one because we have a lot of different likes from everybody in the band. Um, I would say you're gonna hear some. You're gonna hear some Gojira. You're you're gonna hear some. Um, what's that band that Matt's turned me on to recently? Matt's been a good uh, source of music for me lately, but I, I always tend to forget the names. Um, let's see, what else would we be hearing there? Um, Deftones. Definitely would be hearing some Deftones and some Tool and some, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, Ralph, I'm, I'm kind of, Ralph is taking this question in a quiet. different direction and says Jägermeister will be drank on the tour. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I don't know what it is about Jäger bombs, but it takes me to like this parallel dimension where I just get so tuned in. Like, I don't get drunk. I just get, like, in the zone. Like, it's crazy in the zone. So and I'll just... No. So I, I told you a story earlier about a musician who fell asleep on my porch. Mm -hmm. um, he used to call Jaeger the rock, the nectar of the rock gods. 
Yeah, that was my jam. And uh, the band he was in at that time kind of has a Alice in Chains feel, so I'm going to put you on to their, nice. their album once we're off the air so you can check it out. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I always or love your new stuff. You know what? I will play one of the songs on the episode, too. Yeah, there you go. Since we don't have anything to play, you know, play uh, play Rouse Band. Since he's uh, definitely you know, play some Homicide Black. Yeah, play uh, play that stuff, yeah. man. Uh, it, it's uh, it's it's good to again meet good people in the scene. You're gonna meet have your douchebags, but um, my experience has been that mostly good people were out there. Hey, right, so, so I'm always grateful for that. So still still on the t- the tour theme. Mm-hmm. So you know. Usually the band picks the opening um, show has there's meaning behind why it's at that that place, and then the ending okay. show there's a mean, meaning why they're ending there. But let's just talk mm. about that opening show. Where would you want to play it at? If I had my choice of venue for an opening show, um. I mean, I, I've always loved the, uh, who even knows what the crap name of it is now? It's the Post-Gazette Pavilion. It is. I think, again. It is. It's, it's, it, it's, the, it's been all over the road. I'm trying to remember that it's, wow. Did they change it to, it has Post-Gazette Pavilion in it, but there's more to it. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you know where I'm talking about. I know that place Burgettstown. I know exactly where you're talking about. Town, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, actually one time I was uh, in my in my very first band. We had this in our mind that if we ever got to that level where we got to play at the pavilion there, that we had made it. That was like, you know, our young naive dream of making it. And then we got to play one time. Um, it was the Warp Tour, and we got to play on like one of these. It wasn't even a stage. It was like under a tent. Uh, but we were, you know, on cloud nine, we got the passes. We were just so hyped and it was, it was like amazing for us. I'd love to be able to play on the main stage there someday. You know, that'd be really awesome for me. I, um, I've seen a few bands there. Um, yeah, me too. I was there for Motley Crue, their Carnival of Sins tour, which was the week that Katrina hit. And oh, it wow. rained so hard that day that um, it flooded the sidewalk between the pavilion oh, and the lawn. Yeah. And when we were leaving, we were walking through floating garbage to leave. Nice. <laughs> and like nice. knee high. It was gross. <laughs> I got stuck in the monsoon there one time. It was uh, it was a Slipknot show. And um, – it was the most insane thing I've ever seen because people were just r- ripping up that turf and just heaving chunks of turf and <laughs> debris through the air. And my my buddy Kurt got he got smacked right in the face with a glass bottle just out of nowhere. Oh, uh, it it was nuts. It was insane. Like to be in there standing, it was utter chaos. And just seeing it, it was like, oh my god, oh. this is nuts. And Slipknot's playing, and everyone's going nuts, and it was just it was amazing. At the cruise <laughs> show, people were slip it, doing the slip and slide, and they're starting up at the top and diving head first, and just, mm-hmm. and then they were being escorted out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was it was like the mud people for sure. <laughs> um, coincidentally, that show was also the weirdest show I've ever been at. Because <laughs> of who was on the bill, or yeah, it was just Motley Crue. Just them. No, no but openers or nothing. No, and huh. they, they had. Looking back on it, I, it, it was an amazing stage show, right? But I was very freaked out about it at the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it was. There were um, video screens everywhere, and were like people's heads exploding, and oh, okay. Um, it was like some sensory overload. Yeah, and all that's going on, and then all of a sudden. There were Cirque du Soleil women coming down out of the rafters, <laughs> and there was a woman that came out on stilts with this big, huge um, dress on, and then a little person came out from under her dress with an acoustic guitar. It was, it was just, yeah, it was an overload. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take any mushrooms before this happened? <laughs> no, never actually, but no. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're better off. 
my brain's like Swiss cheese these days. I've been a bad boy. No, um, I did, and <clears throat> I did go see them again after that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've never seen the crew. I know uh, that's not necessarily. I wasn't necessarily into the um, the eighties glam. Uh, I was one of those dudes that was like a Pantera anti. We know when Pantera turned from the glam to the grunge, I was like, yeah, you know, I was like sort of anti hair metal and uh, always talked crap on that stuff. And then I, I came to realize as I got older that it air of my ways and those guys really can sing amazing. And I'm jealous that I can't sing like them <laughs> now. Uh, I, I, I'm going to throw out some band names that, that I've seen mm -hmm. there. Kiss, Aerosmith. Yep. Um, Def I saw them together there. Me too. We were probably... Was, was yeah. it when Aerosmith was doing their Honking on Bobo tour? The Blues? I, I don't know. I went with my girlfriend at the time. She was a big Kiss and Aerosmith fan, and I, I, that wasn't my jam. It, it probably was. And I want to say probably, yeah. Aerosmith played a real short set, like maybe mm, 40 minutes. I think so. Yep. Sounds about right. That concert is the one that I tell everyone is the worst one I've ever been to. Really? Yeah, I was very mad at Aerosmith that day. <laughs> oh. um, I think the Steven Tyler may have been sick because they only they played a short set, and yeah. Joe Perry did most of the singing, and, it, and uh. you know. Kiss went on first. Hey, Mikey's in in the chat too. <laughs> oh, Mikey Mixer, Mikey. Yep. Oh man, what's He's, up, Mikey Mixer? He said, "Hey, I know this band." <laughs> he does know this band. He also said, "I that wonder they're decent." <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so since that came up, why don't you why don't you tell us about who's in the band and and what parts they have within the band? Well, since we mentioned Mr. Mixer, he, he's one of the guitar players. He, uh, he and Robbie were in a, working in a project together before this one came along. And uh, same with Zyler. He plays guitar. Um, and uh, he and Matt Hooper, the drummer, were in a project together before this one came along. Uh, Robbie Ferrone plays bass, and you know he needs no introduction as far as the Pittsburgh scene goes. I mean, he's been all over the place, and just one of the you know stand-up dudes that I've ever met. And uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. And then you know me, who was just I was the last one to come into the equation. And um, like I said, I had worked with Hooper, our drummer in uh, several other projects. So we kind of had a history and I had uh, worked with Mikey and Robbie on another project. Um, so we all kind of knew each other. Um, and once we started writing, it just, you know, it just started coming together really good. And, uh, you know, when you feel that and when you have that chemistry, you could just tell that you got something worthwhile, so. Um, Mikey is trying to push hoodies. Um, I'm assuming yeah, those, he never stops. those are available through the band and probably through Endeavor after LLC.com. Mm. Um, He's always uh, pushing them hoodies. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Usually gets a couple white claws in him and he starts making some weird promos. So Ralph says Robbie Perone is the best bassist in the history of bassists that use a pick. <laughs> Yeah, that, there's a whole thing right there. <laughs> to pick or not to pick, that is the question. I think a well-rounded bass player can do both, you know. But I don't have any room to speak, although I did play bass with, with Matt in uh, another band. It was a three-piece, and that was my first ever attempt trying to play bass and sing, and it, it, eh, it was all right. I got better as we went along. I've seen Robbie do that, play bass and sing leads. Oh yeah, he's he's a beast, man. That guy, again, I'm, I'm lucky to have him in the band, and and we cross paths many times throughout our years in the scene. So I know he's a good dude. <laughs> and now we're gonna change it up, and we're gonna move the movie themes for a moment. Okay. All right. So if you could go back in time without breaking the space time continuum, <clears throat> because we don't need Doc Indeed. Brown yelling at us. 
No, we don't need that. <laughs> what band would you go back in time to follow around for a year just to learn from? To follow around to learn from. Hmm. Um. I think uh, for me that might be Alice in Chains, just because of my um, admiration of Lane. Not so much his destructive personality in that, but just um, his musicianship and just his unique style. And um, I don't know. That's one band I, I wish I would have gotten to see before you know that all went down but i don't know I, I think that might be the one for me um if you were going to form a tribute band in hopes of making it on stage with the actual band so you know kind of rock star movie idea yeah uh what band would you form a tribute for um I personally think that that might be Faith No More for me. Because, uh, again, Mr. Patton is just an animal and a creative genius. And, uh, you know, to share the stage with somebody who you really feel was legendary, you know, I mean, that's uh, it's one of the things that would just make it for me. Um. Last week, the movie um, Coming to America, the number two, mm -hmm. came out. And I was watching it with my daughter, and I was pointing out, that's Eddie Murphy, that's Eddie Murphy, that's Eddie Murphy. He mm -hmm. plays so many characters in both of those movies. Right. But that's my segue into if you were going to be in a rockumentary, who would you want to play? Who would I want to s play? Okay. Not so, okay. Yeah, so, like... um. Machine Gun Kelly played Tommy Lee. Who would you want to be? Hmm. Who would I want to be? I am thinking... Man, that's a weird one. <laughs> I told you they weren't your normal questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, who would I want to be? I don't know. I, for some reason, John Davis from corn comes to mind and I'm not exactly sure why um, I maybe it was because of our angsty <laughs> nature I'm not sure I, that's a weird one I'm gonna give you that that's a weird question <laughs> all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take a quick break I'm gonna play um, something off of cages bombs album um, I don't know which song yet but something off of cages bombs and uh, before that, we will play um, a Homicide Black track. Um, maybe, I think, Church on the Hill. We'll play Church on the Hill. Sounds um, good. Hopefully. I, I don't know. Ralph, did you play on that one? <laughs> nah. I, I don't remember timelines. <laughs> yeah, it can get messy sometimes, right? Um, I have a... A story about that whole me replacing Ralph thing. I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> All right, man. Sounds good. Um, okay, so he did not play on that one. Hmm. Ralph, throw out a song that you play that you played on, and I'm sure I have it. And we'll play that one instead. There you go. <laughs> and while we're waiting for that, yeah. those of you that are in the chat room, this is normally where I play a song, and you guys don't get to hear it because Facebook will mute us. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that I played that Cage song and that Homicide Black song. Um, whichever one Ralph tells me to play. I'm really trying to kill time waiting for him to answer. <laughs> There's a little bit of delay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I didn't realize the delay was that long. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we're going to play Homicide Black. We're going to play some Cage. And, oh, I don't have that one. <laughs> oh, look at that. He I bet I do. One out of the cut. I, I bet I do because um, I actually just redid the Homicide Black website. So it is probably there. 
I'll have to dig through and find it. If I have it, we will play Devil's Cauldron. If not, I will pick something else. <laughs> we'll be right mm -hmm. back with Mike from InstaKill. All right. So now we're going to pretend. Oh, House of Black. Okay. <laughs> Hey, that was Cage and Homicide Black. Still not sure what tracks I played because I didn't really play them. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to hear them very shortly. Um, with me tonight is Mike from InstaKill. Um, hanging out in the chat room, we have Ralph McCartney from Homicide Black. We also have Mikey Mixter, uh, also of InstaKill. Um, Wolf. <laughs> Wolf's Customs. Um and I, there was someone else in there. I don't remember now who now. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've thrown a couple off the wall questions at you. Um, I, I think maybe we'll delve a little deeper with some odd ones. So yeah, let's go, man. So I used to teach social studies, and okay, I used to get kicked out of social studies. <laughs> I was flipping through the book one day, and there was a picture of a guy in there that looked exactly like my college roommate, except he died in the 50s. So that's where this question came from. Oh, whoa. So if I was flipping nice. through my social studies book, and I find InstaKill in this social studies book, how did you get in there? Mm. How did I get in there? I probably, um, I probably just took a, you know, like a little pamphlet and stuck it in the book and was just like, yeah, you know, like little, a little flyer and just, you know, turned random pages and put it in there. And then, you know, like a quarter in between these pages, I like to leave little gifts around and stuff like that. So maybe, maybe that'd be <laughs> otherwise, otherwise as, as far as a political movement or something to be known for. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that so much. Maybe uh -huh. just trying to be, uh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I liked your pamphlet answer. That, that was unique. I haven't gotten that one before. <laughs> well, there we go. I'll we'll stick with that one. <clears throat> what? Mikey is talking about getting drunk on white, white claws right now. I have no idea what's that's going his, on over there. That's his jam. <laughs> that's what that dude does. He said he got drunk on he White pushes, Claws and did something stupid. He, well, this is typical of him, yes. <laughs> he usually makes the um, his little hoodie promos whenever he's uh, had a couple. He'll usually start cutting promos. <laughs> but uh, it, it's entertaining, and I think that's one thing that we um, always want to uh, keep at the forefront is not to be too serious and, and keep it light and, and entertaining and have fun with it. That's, he was answering the question. That's how InstaKill gets into the history books. He got drunk on White uh, Claws and did something stupid. He probably streaked around, yeah. Got arrested <laughs> streaking with his just his hoodie on, no pants. Um, his InstaKill hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> if, <clears throat> if you could sit on that bench that everybody talks about and speak to one mm any person in the history of time yeah who would you sit with who would i sit with and talk to so there's um, a second part to this question but <laughs> okay so someone that i find very interesting see i don't know i'm not so much into the typical figures um you know like presidents and those kind of famous people i, I find that artists and musicians are my breed of people you know like I resonate with them the most so I would think it would have to be like one of the famous um, artists or musicians maybe maybe like uh, Van Gogh or uh, what's his name Warhol was a was a Pittsburgh guy Pennsylvania guy um, and he seemed like a very interesting character I also think that um, somebody like uh, oh, what's his name the man on the moon uh, Andy Kaufman. Oh, oh, yeah. Andy Kaufman. <laughs> I feel like he'd be an interesting guy to sit down and have a conversation with. All right, so here, here's the second part of the question. You can only ask them one question. What would you ask them? Oh, 
In that case, I'm changing my answer. Huh. And I'm hey, your, your say, drummer is in the room now too. He says nice. And he thought there was going to be punch I'm gonna and pie. Go with <laughs> punch and pie. No. I think if I if now knowing that I'm going to retract my answer and go and say the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I have I'm a gonna, question and, for him, but you ask yours first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna ask him. What are we gonna do, Randy? <laughs> and I just want to hear just him go off on his tangent about. Ooh, yeah, and pointing the pinky up, and we're gonna go to the square circle, brother. <laughs> you know, what I mean, just that was it could good. be an endless. It could be an endless treasure trove of just fan fantasy right there because that dude would just go ham and it would just be great It'd be great so i think i would ask him if he had to do it over again if he would eat all those slim jims knowing how he died <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i mean that dude was that for me that was a big part of like when i was a little kid i lo- i used to love that wrestling stuff and uh those characters were just so much larger than life and, and those guys just their personality and this, the antics were just so funny and entertaining to me. Have you tried so, to try to watch it recently? Honestly, um, back a couple years ago, they did a spinoff with this like TNA wrestling and then Hogan and all those guys went over and staying. And I, I got on that boat for a minute and then, it, you know, fell off again. I, now, Melina from Chip and the Charge Ups, who's also okay. kind of in your neck of the woods, um, okay. is a huge WWE fan. And she nice. was really excited because they have what they're called, they call it the Thunderdome now. And basically, okay. they're at one of their practice facilities, and there's like TVs in every seat, and they put fans on the TV screens. Okay. And so she, virtually attending the wrestling match. Right. So she, was, she okay. did that, and she was really excited. But I cannot watch that. It, it, it's worse than watching the penguins with the fake cheering. Like, nah, I, I couldn't. Yeah, do it. <laughs> it, it was weird. It was definitely weird for me to get used to that, the fake crowd noise. But I gotta imagine that you know that has to help the psyche of the players a little bit to hear the cheer and to just the music. You know how they play the in between songs and stuff to set that ambiance and just get them a little bit fired up. But, yeah, look, I mean, this whole thing has just been bizarre. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know. Uh, oh, Ralph just updated us. The Pens won 4-1 over Boston tonight. Yes. <laughs> I knew they were up 3-1. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, whenever uh, I was getting ready for this, I was listening to the game, and it was in between periods. So, uh, I, thanks for the update, man. I was watching the new Punky Brewster with my daughters. <laughs> the new Punky Brewster? My yeah, goodness. it's on um, Peacock. <laughs> okay. I haven't delved into the Peacock yet, but I can say that I used to have a, a major crush on Punky Brewster when I was a youngster. And then she grew up to be pretty, pretty... Uh, Gorgeous, mm-hmm. if I do remember. So, so uh, in this version, <laughs> in this version, she's a single mom with four kids. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, that's a rough one. Well, one, I, I think I just started watching it tonight. I think one of them is hers, and then she adopted the other three. Nice. But anyway, and I'm I'm sure I'm sure that that's you know, who knows with the stories and the what tales they're trying to tell these days but that's pretty metal you know punky bruiser's pretty metal i will say in the first episode she went to leave and she had two different shoes on and her daughter said mom you have two different shoes and she looked down and goes still works and she left <laughs> <laughs> well that was a thing back when i was in back when i was in school yep. we would like you know you and your friends would switch one shoe you'd be walking around with one of your own and then one of your buddies shoes. Oh, who knows why we did it we how, why we do half the weird crap we did, but and then there was the uh, the rolling the pant leg thing where you folded it. Oh, pegging, it. yeah, <laughs> pegging it up. Yeah, we're showing our age now, right? <laughs> Only if they know what we're talking about, <laughs> right? Like, what are these geezers talking about? We thought we we're talking about metal, not punky Brewster. <laughs> She's punk. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, it's right in their name, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I was never a huge. I was never a huge punk fan myself, other than yeah, Green Day a little bit, but it was always more metal for me. Um, what what song do you wish you would have written? Hmm. Uh, there's a, there's a couple, and I don't know that. Um, now this might get a little sentimental, maybe. Uh, because I've just had certain songs over the years. I was a single dad since we were talking about that. And uh, there was songs that just kind of, you know, take you to that moment. Um, there's, uh, well, I don't even know if I remember the name of the song, but it's by Cold. Wasted Years, I think, is the name. Um, and even to this day, when I hear it, it just gives me goosebumps and... Uh, I used to always go back in the day, we would go to karaoke and I would uh, always bring like CDs of metal stuff and get the DJ to play it. And I would like sing along with the tracks. And even though no one knew the songs but me, I would just build them out and I loved it. And, uh, you know, people would always come up to me like, what was that song you sang? And that was really cool. And, you know, and maybe it was because I was just doing something different than everybody else or maybe they really enjoyed it. But I, I always just loved it, and uh, Cold was one of those bands. They they got a lot of good songs that I really like, but I, if I had to pick one, for, for whatever reason, I think that's the one because it just it just gets me every time I hear it. Here, here's a little known fact: I once sang karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing. Uh, <laughs> nice. Well, a lot of the people that sing karaoke actually. You know, it's questionable, it's debatable whether they can sing or not. But and you're getting up there and loving it, man. You got the stones to do it. Well, here, here, here's, it, here's the scenario. I was a freshman in high school, and my best friend's dad owned – or not a freshman, a junior in high school. And my best friend's dad owned a bar. And um, we were there um, with a Spanish exchange student. Uh, we were trying to get him to sing. And uh, yeah. he wouldn't do it on his own. So we got up together and sang La Bomba. There you go. There you <laughs> go, man. You, you got to bust out one of those classics. You know, you bust out some uh, La Bomba. You bust out some Living La Vida Loca. <laughs> you just get the people amped up, man. You know, they're out there to hear them hits. But, yeah, I, you know, he had the right accent and everything. I just I, I sang when he was looking at me. And when he wasn't looking, I stopped singing. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> but anyway. Um, a couple more questions for you. Yeah. Um, this question has a real long explanation, but basically I'm trying to get noticed by Dave Grohl. <laughs> so okay. my question is, who is your Dave Grohl? And what I mean by that is the Foo Fighters are known for bringing people from the crowd up on stage and letting them play with them. So okay. who would you want to join on stage? Who would I want I myself want to join on stage with or have join on stage with me? Who would you go up on stage with? Who would I go up on stage with? Um, uh, man, for me, I'm thinking I'm thinking it would be uh, probably corn if the, if I could get up and do uh, you know the are you ready <laughs> uh, and just watch the crowd set off, you know? Um, because I remember back in the day watching them at the, uh, when they played the Woodstock and they had this one shot from like behind the drum riser as just this massive sea of people was just going ham. And that was just one of those moments for me. I was like, I, this is what I want to see. Like, I want to see that sea of people erupting to my jam, you know, uh, that would be amazing. So to see that, to get up, to do the are you ready, that would be pretty badass for me. Um, if – this one might not be fair since there's so many musicians listening in and, and chatting. <laughs> if you were going to build a um, band to manage <laughs> from the local – Oh, God, I have thick skin to be in this. <laughs> So you're going to build your own band 
to manage. You're not allowed to be in it yourself. Okay. Um, who would you put in your band? Okay. From the local scene. From the local scene. Huh. Am I not allowed to use like guys I already got? Nope. Are, are they excluded? <laughs> they are excluded. So are we trying to make it interesting? Yes. They are excluded. Okay, so I have to look outside of my current guys. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'm thinking. Um, all right, so let's think about guitar players here. Uh, and we're talking about managing, so we want a personality that's, you know, not one of these people that is like schizophrenic and freaking nuts. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, going to throw it to good old Ralph. Ralph can get down on that base and slap it a base. Um, guitar. I am, uh, man. There's this dude. I don't even know if he plays anymore. I know he makes custom basses, beardly custom basses. Oh, and yeah. uh, I always called him Darth Shreddius. He uh, was he was in Camp Element. I can't think of his yes. name. Yes, I right, and I feel like a, a dumbass for not knowing his name. Um, but he was always one of my uh, favorite guitar players. Um, and then uh, there was another guitar player for a band called uh, Shipwreck, I Promise, which I don't think they're around anymore. I um, heard of them, but I didn't know anything about them. Yeah, and, and he was uh, just, I really love the riffage, um, you know, that the, those guys came up with. Um, as far as a singer, man, I... Uh, Maybe, um, well, I don't know. Let's maybe go to a drummer then, because I can't think of a singer off the top of my head. A drummer, um, I, I liked working with... Um, hold, hold that thought for one second. Rick Link. Beard that's it. That's Thanks, it. Thanks, Mikey. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, sorry, Rick. If he hears this, man, I feel like a jerk that I didn't remember his name. But well, I, I interviewed him a couple who, times, and he played a show for me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we, we knew who we were talking about. I just, I'm, I'm terrible with names. Um, so drums, I, uh, I'm i thinking maybe, um, see, we're talking about guys that aren't necessarily playing anymore, but I enjoyed my time with uh, Martin from a former project that I did. Um and as far as a singer, I would think, again, I, I'm currently not so in, in the scene. Um, there is uh, a guy, Mike, I want to say Peroch or something uh, along those lines. Mike, Mike P. Rock. He, yeah, P. Rock. He was in he, Creep. Um, yes, and he sings in uh, a Staley, couple other projects. Staley's, Staley's Comet. Great. Yeah, that dude's um, that here, dude's got some good pipes here and now. And um, yeah, and he seems like a real good dude. And is. the same thing with the rest of those guys. They seem like good guys that I would wouldn't mind spending time with and managing. And they were always you know level headed and not you know popping off and being nuts. I, so I, I think that's might that be it. I've told this story a couple times about Mike, but I was. Um, putting on a they leechburg used to do this thing called halloween berg and they yeah. wanted to do a battle of the bands and you know bands aren't all that <laughs> they don't like doing battles of the bands so mm -hmm. um i told them that i'd help them but it would just be some bands coming out to play and um mike's band at the time was called sift and i had never met mike but i knew their bass player and um they came out and they played and the turnout wasn't so great but there was a handful of kids that stayed after everything was done. And Mike hung out there and talked to them and signed autographs. And it just, that was, that was the day Mike won me over. He's a great guy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like I was saying, you know, uh, most of the people that I've met throughout my years in the scene are, are on par with that. They're, they're good people. They're not, 
you know, conceited. You, obviously, you're going to have that with some people, and whatever. It's it's your prerogative. But um, I've, I've the majority of my experience has been good people, and that that kind of that's what always made me gravitate towards musicians and stuff is because I just feel like we're kindred spirits, and the fact that our nature is that that way we're just more we're open we're giving of ourselves humble more so than conceited and uh i don't know i just like that about people and artists so have always been that they've always filled that for me it's been that kind of person all right so i know i said two questions but i, I still have two <laughs> yeah man they're, they're the away, easiest bro. ones of the night though at least they should be um Besides your Facebook page, which is actually scrolling below you right now, facebook.com okay. slash instakillmetal, um, where else can you guys been, be found online? Uh, we have a YouTube also, which is, I believe, Instakill Metal as well. Um, I um, Aside from that, I think we have the Instagrams and uh, the Golden Grams. And uh, <laughs> the Fruit Loops, we got all the stuff. Like, I, I'm out of touch with it, man. You know, my boomer ass stays on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I do most of my stuff. My Twitter, my yeah. Twitter is an autofill for my radio station and Facebook posts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, had the I back to the MySpace days, man. That was my jam back then. I used to. Hack the crap out of my MySpace. That's how I learned um, cascading style sheets, which is okay. coding for websites. <laughs> right. Hey, you got to start somewhere, man. That's right. Oh, well, Mikey Mixer is yeah. making his own band. He says Mike Pallone on guitar, Matt Franny on drums, Ralph McCartney on bass, Mike Purock singing, and Zach Shepard also on guitar. That's who he would want right. to manage. Nice. Oh, hey, and, and I, your Instagram. I agree. Your Instagram is InstaKill Official. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and no disrespect to anybody that I just you know. Those those dudes are the ones that came to mind because yeah, I was put on the spot and <laughs> had to just check out some names. But uh, all those guys as well, you know. I, I got nothing but love for fellow musicians. So. Speaking of Mike Pallone, Skell is currently working on a new album. I don't know if they've announced that, but I just did. <laughs> ah, nice. Um, Sweet. If you paid, yeah, paid attention, there's, it, to they posted some pictures of stage. themselves at the vault, so if you couldn't figure it out. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I, um, I, I hope we can get into that here soon and uh, get something recorded. We've talked about it, but it uh, just hasn't worked out just yet, so... Well, it's interesting times we're living in right now. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, weird. man. <laughs> right. I remember before the COVID. All right, last question I have for you on the air. <laughs> um, what's coming up for InstaKill? What do you guys have lined up? Well, we're going to be uh, doing this thing here coming up in a couple of weeks. What's that, on the 29th, right? April 29th. Yeah. Uh, SOS PGH concert series. Um, yeah. If you would like to purchase a subscription for that, which is only ten dollars, go to SOS PGH. Or let me start that over. SOS twenty twenty PGH dot org slash concerts. Um, that is another website that I did. Um, that is April 29th for the metal metal night. Um, there are it starts April eighth. It's four nights, four Thursdays in a row, ending with metal night. Which features Scale, Winner's Descent, and Instakill. Yeah, very, uh, very excited about that, and uh, some good company, you know. Especially yeah, I... for some noobs. We're 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 new. I guess you consider us new to the scene, um, even though we've all kind of been around in different entities. But this this venture is definitely new to the scene, and uh, you know, hopefully, we can find our niche, and um, you know. Get some kids rocking out with us, and get you know, get some support and and, and help out the scene. Um, that's you know, without a scene, 
it, it's really, <laughs> you know, you don't have support for one another and just kind of a camaraderie and a brotherhood. It really is, uh, it's hard to make a splash. So, uh, Zyler is now in, your whole band is hanging out with us, apparently. <laughs> Except for Robbie. I haven't nice. seen Robbie say anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to see. I'm glad a guy showed up, man. Good stuff. I'm, 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 hopefully I'm representing us proud. I try. <laughs> um, I'm a bit of a tool, so what are you going to do? So, I, being a teacher, am almost fully vaccinated. So oh, I, haven't, okay. I haven't told my wife this year, this yet, but I may show up on the 29th. Okay, uh, nice. Being a sponsor, I think they'll let me in the door. <laughs> yeah, I think you should get, you should get the all access pass. Um, I would hope so. I mean, I, I designed a website <laughs> and, and I'll it's be interviewing be somebody from your band the night before on the 28th. Right. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, definitely. Again, I appreciate it. It's a, it's a great opportunity and can't thank you enough for it. You know? All right. So here's what we are going to do at this point. I'm going to let Mike, uh, sort of ride off into the night. We're going to go off the air and I, I know I told him I was going to tell him a story. I don't remember what it was. Maybe he does. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> talk for a few minutes, the rest of you. Um, get to wait until Friday to hear the finished version of this with all of the music added and uh, me editing out my terrible laugh. Um, anyway, this has been episode number 559 of the Pennsylvania Rock Show. Uh, when you hear Hell yeah. John, the American Hilljack Lane, you'll know that this episode is over, but that doesn't mean that you should leave the station you're listening to. Um, the majority of them are going to play some more unsigned rock and metal um, if you're listening to Mega Rock or 107.1 FM St. Louis, which are the same station, um, you will get to hear a mix of unsigned music and signed music. So don't go anywhere. If you're listening through the podcast, listen to some more episodes. Go to buildthescene.com. You can listen to the Pennsylvania Rock Show. You can listen to Three Questions and a Song. You can listen to the SOS PGH Concert Series pre-interviews. I need a better title for that. Um, or any of the other podcasts that are listed on the podcast page. Um, make sure you check us out each and every Friday night. And for Three Questions and a Song, it's the 1st and the 15th. Um, with that said, I want to thank you for hanging out with me, Mike. Absolutely, man. Again, I, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, anything I can do to help out the scene and help out the people in the scene and help us all elevate ourselves and our game. And, you know, I'm all for it, man. Cool. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be chatting with you in a few weeks or someone else from the band, but maybe. <laughs> I think they'll determine whether I did a fair enough job and they might just kick me out. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. With that said, we will catch you next week. All right. Thanks a lot.